Hey there, Sam. Now to set up a proper web server, the first thing that we want to do is to comment out the Laravel test service. We'll be adding Nginx and PHP FPM to our Docker services. So I'll go ahead and create new keys in our Docker Compose YAML file here for Nginx and PHP FPM. We're going to create a Docker file for each of these services. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'll create a new folder inside the Docker directory which was generated by the cell artisan publish command. If you don't have this folder, simply create one or just publish the cell vendor asset using PHP Artisan. And now I'll go ahead and create a new Docker file inside our Nginx folder. And I'll copy over some of the boilerplate. That sets up our Nginx Docker service. And just a heads up, because I'm lazy, I copied most of the configuration that I'm going to show you in this lesson from various places in the internet. And I've added a few modifications and flavors here and there. Our Nginx configuration here is largely based on Laradoc, which is a wonderful project if you're looking at dockerizing your app ecosystem and pull in other third-party app services. The link is in the description if you're interested. Okay, what's happening here? So on the first line, we're simply basing this service on the Nginx Alpine Docker image. Next, we're copying an Nginx configuration file to the Docker image, which I should probably create it now. Let's do that. And with the magic of copy and pasting, we can get things done very quickly. Again, I have shamelessly copied this from Laradocs, and these are just a boilerplate for us to set up our Nginx server. Feel free to customize the configurations if you need. All right, back to the Docker file. And next, we're adding a few softwares, including Log Rotate that will take care of rotating and compressing the logs files, Open SSL that will take care of creating a self signed certificate for HTTPS connections, and lastly, Bash and Curl. In the next section, we'll set up a user and user group, and also configuring the Log Rotate software. And once again, I should copy and paste over the configuration files. The log rotate nginx file is just another configuration files that manages the logs files in our nginx server. Feel free to customize it if you want. And next, we're copying over another shell script called startup.sh, which is the primary way for us to start our nginx web server. Let's create the shell script now, which is a super simple script that will create our SSL certificate if it doesn't exist and we'll set up a cron job that will restart our Nginx server every 6 hours. And finally, we'll run our startup script and expose the ports for HTTP connections. Okay, we're not done yet. If we look at our Nginx configuration file, you'll notice a line here that it will try to include the site's configuration files in a folder called Sites Available. These are the configurations for all the sites that we want our Nginx service to serve. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll create a new folder called Sites and copy and paste some boilerplate again. Now there's a few configuration keys here that we want to be aware of. The first one is the SSL certificate file path. This server configuration is expecting that an SSL certificate and its key is living in this folder in our Docker container. And just for development purposes, we'll create a SSL certificate later. The next item is a server name. This is the domain of our website. You can put in whatever you want. Just make sure that you map it to 0.0.0.0 in your computer's host file. Root is the path that we store our Laravel app. So make sure that this path exists inside the Nginx Docker container. And now to put our configuration files inside our Docker service, we'll go back to Docker Compose and add a few configuration to our Nginx service. The first thing that we want to do is to add a build key. That will point towards the Docker file of our Nginx service. Nginx will depend on our PHP FPM service, so I'll put it down here. And we'll also add it to the sales network group. Next, we'll also add some ports mapping so we can connect to this Docker service from the host. On HTTPS and HTTP connections, we are using environmental variables here, which I'll set the values in our .env files later. And lastly, we'll add in some volumes. For the SSL certificate, the path mapping to our application code, the Nginx log path, and also the site configurations. Alright, next, let's go to our .env file 
and we'll initialize the environment variables that we have specified so far. You probably don't want to see me typing in these values one by one, so I'm going to use the magic of copy and pasting once again. Okay, next, we need to create our SSL folder, where we'll put in the SSL certificate for the Nginx server. I'll create a helper script inside it that will generate the self-signed certificates for us. Let's run this script and go back to the folder and we see the certificate created ready to be used by our Nginx server. And now at this point, we're mostly done with Nginx. Let's move on to creating the PHP FPM Docker service. PHP FPM is much easier to set up compared to Nginx. We'll go back to Docker Compose and specify the folder that will create our PHP FPM Docker file, which will be in our Docker directory and a PHP FPM folder. Let's go ahead and create a Docker file. And I have found a PHP FPM Docker image on the internet that's built for Laravel. The link is in the description if you want to check them out. Unfortunately, at the time of recording this video, they have yet to publish a Docker image that's compatible with the latest PHP version. I'm using PHP 8.1 at the moment, and the latest tag is for PHP 8.0. But that's okay, it is not the end of the world, we simply need to build it ourselves. So that means I'm going to copy and paste the docker file and the other source files from their repository on the PHP version 8.1 branch into our project. This will be the workaround for the time being until they have published PHP FPM version 8.1. Alright, back to our docker file, I'll paste in the code, and the docker file is basically installing all the dependencies needed by our Laravel app. What's important to take note here is that they are running the Docker entry point shell script at the end of the Docker file. And also the Laravel INI config file to the Docker image. Let's copy over these two files to our project. Once we're done, we'll go back to our Docker compose and add in the volume mapping, the network, and the port exposed. And now we're basically done. Let's give it a shot. We'll go to our terminal, back to our project root, and type in cell up d to start our Docker services. And Docker Compose should start building our services. And now if we go to the browser and visit the domain as we specified in the Nginx site configuration files, which in my case will be laravel.dev.local, we should be greeted by the Laravel default welcome page. And that's it. Key takeaways for this lesson, Laravel cell is a mere wrapper around Docker Compose. We can easily add or remove Docker services thanks to the customizable nature of Laravel cell. That's it for now and I'll see you again in the next lesson.